Thanks, Susan. Hey, Susan. Hi. And Hi. John. Hey, Charles. How are you? <laughs> okay. Are you enjoying this rather dreary, dreary, wet day today? Oh, it's so beautiful. I can't believe it. I sat out at the pool and then I went for a stroll. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you believe that. Home. You believe that I got a bridge. <laughs> okay. You know, I could use a bridge. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Um yeah. It 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 was just it got a wee bit nippy this morning. Yeah. Supposed to be even colder by the weekend. <laughs> yeah, it got down below thirty last night. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like, okay. Yeah, we're definitely beginning to feel like winter now. It is. Okay. Well, John, you know, I think you are the only one who sent anything in. I sent in something. Today? Yeah, it's about 12.30, 1 o'clock. Mm. <laughs> I didn't see anything for you, and I checked. I mean, yeah, just, just before I came online, I looked again. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Maybe I missed it. Always take another look. Don't look. I'll resend it. Uh, yeah, would you? Because I don't have it. Okay, well, let me go out of this because I'm going to have to do it on this tablet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, why don't, why don't you send it and rejoin us, and I'll okay. I'll keep an eye and see if it comes in. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Um. Hmm. Yeah, it's pretty light, people. <laughs> Say what now? I said it's getting pretty light as far as people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know. We're getting into the holiday season. Oh, I know. A lot of things going on. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I think, um, well, I wouldn't say that Zoom is, you know, is kind of getting to be old, you know, for people because now they can get out as well. But, you know, but yeah, I think a lot of them, you know, they, they have found other things to do. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I don't, I don't get out that much, and so the Zoom is great for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but uh, you know, I mean, it's like on. Um, it seems like the 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 days that get highly attended generally are Mondays seem to have a high attendance, and then uh, Fridays for the. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people show up for that. And then, yeah, it's like Tuesdays for the critique. I mean, I think, what are we, I think we had like eight people last week. Yeah, usually it's, it's decent, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think we had like eight people last week, and then it was Wednesday of last week. We only had like three people. Right, three people. yeah. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it's spotty, you know, it's like. Yeah, it's spotty. You know, well, well I, I just hope it doesn't go away. <laughs> well, I, you know, hey, um, I'm going to be around for, like I said, two more years, and uh, you know, I don't have any intention of going anywhere. So very good. Very and this good. is and this is what they have me doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see. All right. Um, let's see if anything else comes in for Susan. I mean. Yeah, the last thing I have coming in is something from you, John. I have a couple of things. Let's see, other, let's see, no. Yeah, I sent those in probably around noon time. We went after twelve today, I think. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Hey, Susan, can you hear me? Yeah, I I just sent it again. I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't show up though in my sense box. I don't know what's going on here. Um, 
Hmm. Are you sending too big of a file? They have a lot of things you're sending at one. There were there it is. It's it's in my sent now. See see okay. if you've gotten it now. Yeah. Uh, and you sent it to my Fulton County address, right? Uh yeah. Um, Charles dot Scoggins at Fulton County. Right. Well, I, I just have Charles Scoggins, but usually it goes to you with that. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the address you've gotten from me. Um hmm. Well, let's see. Let's see if I can, I'll reload this and see if, you know, it came in. Usually when things come in, they'll just kind of pop up there, but. Yeah, I still don't have it. I'll tell you what, you know, here a little bit later in the class, I'll I'll go back and I'll check, okay? Because it's, it was not in my set file before, so I don't know what happened to it before. Mm -hmm. But it is in there now, so um, okay. Maybe it's just taking a couple minutes because it had, um, yeah. it had a couple pictures on it. Um, yeah. But it's just it's one picture. But I sent you the picture that I drew from. Okay. Um, All right. Well, like I said, um, yeah. Here, when when we get into the class, we'll take a short break, and I'll I'll go back and I'll check and make sure. Okay. Or should I just, um, I could try to send it again, I guess. No, no. If it said that it sent it, then let's just give it a little bit of time. I mean, okay. you know, for all the wonderful, you know, uh, technology that we have today, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's instantaneous. You know, <laughs> it's quick, but sometimes it just takes a while. You know, I mean, I've had people send me things you know, actually, you just popped up. Ta -da! How about okay. that? Oh. oh, that's good. Yeah, see, we, you know, we sat here and yammered for a few minutes and, you know, <laughs> gave it a little time and there we go. Okay, let me download these real quick. Oh, you got a picture. You got it. yeah. Yeah, you got a picture in a picture. Let's see. So, yeah, yeah, I sent a picture of what I've I drew from. So mm -hmm. um, yeah. okay. now how do I get back into Zoom? <laughs> uh well, evidently you are in Zoom because I can hear you. Oh, okay. Here there it is. Okay. Hey Armando. Hello, John. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Fine, I saw your girlfriend today, but she didn't ah, talk to her. You didn't talk to her? No. Oh. I see we have a new, uh, uh, I don't know how to call it, Mr. Duncan. Yep. Yes, Comer. Hey. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I'm here. Yes, Comer is your first name, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and then Duncan G. Right, okay. Yeah. All right. Let me uh, let me see if I can find Susan's piece. I think I'll turn my light on. Okay. And I can close a few windows here. And uh, and then I'll reopen it after I get Susan in in the right file. There we go. So Armando, how have you been? Well, I'm fine. I complete seventy six year yesterday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. So your birthday was yesterday, so was mine. Oh, oh yeah, my happy, God. Two, two happy birthdays. Birthday. Happy, happy birthday happy to birthday both, of you. both of you. Wow. Well, <laughs> you remember November uh, 14, 1951. <laughs> Charles I told Charles between him, Bob, and John, they get can get together and sing the happy birthday. You know, make well, that to me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and <laughs> as I and as I told you, Armando, the last thing you want to do is hear me sing anything. Um, <laughs> okay. Anything. <laughs> you will be surprised, but uh, yeah. it yeah, it is painful. That's, okay. That's I promise funny. you. Well, that, yours that's, was that's, yesterday, that's, Armando. Yours was yesterday. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yep. yep. And then uh, Scorpio Scorpio. was yesterday as well. So both of you yes. are November Scorpio. the 14th. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm 71. 
Okay. I'm set up, oh, I'm older than Charles. you. I'm Prince set up Charles. I mean, King, King Charles is uh, our birthday, too. I'm say, sorry, what? King Charles. Oh, King Charles. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, like so, in England, King Charles. Okay. All you, all you famous people together. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> You know, Charles, we are a Scorpio. We like everything or nothing. That is funny. Yeah, well, my mother was a Scorpio, actually. Yeah. I I could tell you some stories about her, but yeah, <laughs> we won't. <clears throat> well, anyway, um, thank you all for coming on this kind of cold rain. Thank you for being there. Yes. Oh, Gene's here, too. Okay. I just got home just in time. Good. Hello, Miss Dean. Good for you. Okay. So you see, you know, it, it worked out. So we got so Gene's here, John's here, uh, Susan is here, uh, Comer's here, and Armando is here. So and then of course there's me. All right. Now I kind of confused because I saw Barbara at lunch. Are you uh, teaching this Friday or not? Yes. No, oh, okay. Yeah, not last Friday. Last Friday was Veterans Day. Yeah. Yeah, this week, no, we actually have an on-site class. But next week, Friday, you won't be. Yeah, next, yeah, the week after that, there's something, well, that's Thanksgiving. Yes, yes on Thursday. Yeah, well, Thursday and Friday. The center will be closed. Mm -hmm. okay, for Thanksgiving. But there could be most class on Tuesday, right? Pardon me? There is class next Tuesday. I mean, y'all yeah. were having class Monday, yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, um, all the way up through Wednesday. Yeah, it's just okay. it's just I'm gonna, Thursday. I'm gonna have to be a little late to that class, but I'll get I will get there. But. Okay, yeah, it's just Thursday and Friday that uh, that we will be off next week. Yeah, I okay. uh, I will be leaving today at three thirty because I have dinner invitation. Oh boy. Full and stomach Dewey. better than a full heart, apparently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and do we and do we do we want to hear the details of this dinner? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I got one Maybe afterwards, not before. <laughs> and I got one on Sunday. So <laughs> Armando, you're a busy guy. What can I say? Yeah. Well, you don't gonna turn down a dinner invitation when you don't pay. Well, no, probably. Well, if if I enjoy the company of the person that I'd be with, yes, I think that would be the thing that would matter you know, mm -hmm. to me, whether I paid or not. So, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, having a having a dinner dinner invitation from the but from someone who's going to make you miserable, uh, I think I can pass on that. <laughs> I can <guess>, I pass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it doesn't make you enjoy the meal any any better. If you don't enjoy the company and the conversation so yeah um at any rate let's jump on into this uh i've got a few things to share with you guys now that susan sent her piece in and john did and of course gene i have your things from last week yes i also i also uh downloaded um not everything because there's <laughs> a lot um but from the uh, Plain Air Salon competition uh, for the month of October, okay? Uh, so I, I downloaded some of the work from that. We're gonna take a look at it today. And then- Did you download can... mine? <laughs> Do what now? Did, did you download it mine? It's on the wall and I forgot to take a picture. No. You mean, you mean what you're painting in class? Uh-huh. No, when you, when you finish, then you can take a picture of it and submit it, and we'll you know talk about it here. Okay. So right. John critique the thing. Well, John put you know put some things in there that he's working on. Okay, mm -hmm. and, and I would assume that he's considered he would consider them finished. Okay. <laughs> so when you finish your piece, Armando, then you can submit it. Okay. All right. All right. So anyway, let's uh, let's jump on in here and take a look and see what people turned in. So we'll start with Susan. Oh, it's a baby. It is a baby. 
you know? <laughs> yeah. Wow. You're right. It is a baby. Uh, okay. A so brand, uh, a brand new baby. So this is the who? This is a brand new baby. It's my my brand new great nephew that was born on eleven eight. Okay. Yeah. Born. Yeah, we see the price tag on her. <laughs> Is it a her? No, it's a him. It's a, it's him. a him. Okay. Yeah. It's so it's so hard to tell at that age. You know. Yeah. Anyway. Um, you know, he looks he looks pretty happy with himself, you know. He's pretty content. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh so let's let's talk proportions here, Susan. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know the head's probably a little bit big, but it looked big to me on the on the picture. So, well, I haven't actually seen him yet. He's in Jacksonville, Florida. So. I see. Yeah, um, and the fact is, the baby's heads generally, you know, in in proportion to the adults, do have enormously large heads. Okay, because they're small bodies, large heads, right? But okay. even okay. It, at that case, right? Uh, I think you've made your head a little bit bigger than the body <laughs> in the drawing okay uh okay. From, from what i can see and again you know look at the size of his hands um now interestingly enough you know people keep thinking that hands are small but the fact is mm, hands are pretty good size yeah. now at that age you know they are not the size of the head yet but you know, they're still bigger than you've probably drawn them. And, you know, that's a common thing. Um, you know, people tend to diminish the size of hands and feet for some reason. And and they're generally pretty well, his, big. His feet were actually cut off in the picture. They weren't they weren't quite there. So um they weren't? not at the bottom of the picture, no. Um oh. well, I can see him. You you, you can't can see it all of them. Yeah. Okay. The the picture on your phone? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I can see all the way down to his feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I just don't see the whole foot, I think. Uh, yeah, I mean it's just yeah, it's just the bottom part of the foot that's cut off. Yeah, but you've got from the just about the top of his head all the way down. So you know, at any rate. Uh looks like he's on okay. somebody's lap. You know, because I see somebody's legs yeah. behind him. And uh, oh, I is would, that a leg? Okay. I would yes, I guess it's two legs, and I would say it's a woman's. Yeah, I thought it was like a car seat, but I could be wrong. Um. Well, unless unless that car seat has a t-shirt and a pair of shorts on, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and and kneecaps. Um. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of thinking it's yeah. I'm kind of thinking it's somebody's lap, you know. Um, but anyway. Oh, probably, okay. He's probably he probably is that that is probably a lap. I was thinking it was um a car seat. A car seat. Yeah. 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 Um, but uh, yeah, he's actually a pretty well. I don't know how big this person is. It could be like a a fairly young girl. Um. Yeah, it's probably his mother. Yeah, it's probably probably his mom. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, he's he's a pretty good sized boy, you know, because I mean. Yeah, he was, he was actually eight pounds, ten ounces, twenty three inches. Okay. That's a um, pretty good sized boy. Yeah, that's a pretty good sized baby. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Just looking at the length of him, you know, I mean, he's basically the almost the same length as her upper thigh, and you know, depending on how tall she is, you know, that's, yeah. You know, yeah, pretty good size for a baby. Okay. And what's his name? His name is Hollis Sidney Rothstein. Okay. His name for my father. My father was Sidney Rothstein. So okay. I'm glad my father finally got a name. It's, yeah. It's All right. Time. Yeah, I'm still waiting so. for that. I don't think it's going to happen, but, you know. <laughs> um, uh, well, my son got my middle name, you know, Stuart. But uh, anyway. Um, all right. So let's. And his first name is Hollis. Hollis, yes. Okay. All right. So let's talk. So let's talk about your drawing of Hollis. Okay. 
So there's a lot of good things about the drawing, okay? And really the only part that's off is really the proportions. Um, but, you know, when you look at the drawing overall, you know, do you understand that it's a baby? Yes. Do you understand that he's lying down on something? And even the way you drew it, Susan, uh -huh. it looks like a pair of thighs. Okay. It really, it really yeah. does. So I mean, you you were pretty <laughs> even accurate. I it was a car seat. Okay. Yeah, even though you thought it was a car seat, you you still made it look <laughs> like a pair of eyes. Um, you know, I mean, you basically drew what you saw, which is fine. You know, because that's kind of what we asked you to do. But and we keep talking about this over and over again. Um, if okay, if you would vary your line weight you know, on your outlines uh, a little bit uh -huh. more. So you had a little more variety and you could actually indicate with those outlines where the light was coming from, you know, then that would make that, um, you know, that and the proportions would make this a much stronger draw. Okay? Uh, okay. And I think I've told you this before. I mean, the way you use line work, it really does... It, it's very reminiscent of an artist by the name of Egon Schiele, okay? And um, and this has very much so that look of, of Schiele's work. So, yeah, you're channeling Schiele, which is not a bad thing, okay? But again, you know, a little more sophistication in the line or the use of line would really help this a lot, okay? Now, let me ask you this, okay? When you're looking at the photo of Hollis, where do you uh -huh. think the light is coming from? Uh, from the right, uh, 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 yeah. upper right side? Yeah, I would say upper right. Yeah, so yeah. it's kind of coming in, you know, at about a 45 degree angle onto Hollis's head. And then you see the light, you know, really kind of hitting really the whole front of his body, except for the, the leg, right? Which is in shadow. <laughs> And yeah. uh, and most of his hand, right? The bottom so left, but the shadow, yes. Yeah, and really the the part of his face that falls into shadow is really the left, you know, about the left left half, you know, a little bit less than that. But you know, I mean, yeah, I should have put more shadow on under where his well, arm is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, you could have you could have used more value or tone. Right. But, right. you know, but the main thing was if you would have really made that observation when you started drawing it and then varied the line weight to indicate, say, that the left hand side of the face was more in shadow and the right hand side of the face was really more in light. Again, you know, it would make the, the drawing, even though you don't have a lot of value change on it, still feel like it's more three-dimensional okay okay and uh i think i told you this before but i really want you you know i mean you really need to try to draw something you know even if it's only like five or ten minutes every day but instead okay. of just trying to get a drawing done really focus on your line and trying to vary that line and really pay attention to where the light is coming from and just practice it. It could be simple things like, you know, an egg. It could be a coffee cup, uh, a plate, you know, just little things around your house. It doesn't have to be like a really complicated, you know, thing. Just, you know, simple shapes and forms. But again, really concentrate on how you use that line and where the light is coming from. And you know, have that indicated with those changes in the line that you're using. Okay. Okay. Because yeah. the more the more you begin to focus down on that, the better you're going to get at. It, okay. Okay. Um, you know, and not just looking at the shapes. Okay. So. Uh, so moving on up, we're going to talk to Mr. John Gigliotti. Yes. John, Johnson in three things actually. Mm. He's, uh, in, he's in the Christmas spirit. 
Well, yeah, I, you know, I, I think he, you know, evidently had a blizzard over at John's house. <laughs> it's, it was cold enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually, I was kind of I was kind of surprised this morning, you know, seeing as how it got down to 27 last night and, uh -huh. it, was, and it was raining. I was really surprised that it wasn't frozen hmm. around here. Yes, so. we'll, be, we'll be cold here in two days. I think the, I think the ground is the ground is still too warm to freeze. <laughs> yeah, that might still have a, a bit of heat left in it as well. So, you know, and uh the good news is, you know, for any of you who were here with me uh, yesterday, you know, you uh, you might remember I was having a roof put on this house yesterday and they were up there working. Well, they actually started yesterday and they finished yesterday. They were fast. Um, oh, wow. So where yeah. are you now? I'm in Smyrna. Oh. Um, but yeah, they got a whole new roof on this house yesterday. I was amazed. That's pretty good. That's really good. Yeah. Uh, and they did a good job, you know. But, uh, you know, just in time for all the rain and, you know, cold weather. So yes. I haven't done that. Um, all right. So tell us a little bit about this, John. What inspired um, you? It's not much. I'm, I'm still just trying to do, to keep up doing something as often enough, not every day. I was, but until I get my total inspiration for my masterpiece. But so I, I just, this is a, what, nine by 12. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just uh, something I did to keep painting. Okay. All right. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to make a couple comments about this. Okay. And That's why I said then. <laughs> yeah. Um, so for the most part, I mean, you know, the composition, things like that, you know, work fine. Uh, is it the most interesting composition? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, because it's kind of centered, even though you're kind of running that low area or stream uh, through the center. Yep. And mm -hmm. kind of at a diagonal. You know, thank goodness it's not coming straight at us. Uh, and we're standing in freezing water. Um, but Though, you know, in using watercolor, we've talked about this before, um, you've got these really strong greens, you know, for your trees. Right. And, you know, I really want you to start working about, you know, rather than taking the color straight out of the pan, really beginning to try to mix it down a little bit, soften it. Right? Well, I actually did. That. That is mixed. The... Uh... Uh, some of the greens are mixed with the uh, paint gray and a little bit of white. So I did, the colors are not straight out of the tube. Okay. Well, the, again, you know, it's like, like the tree that's closest to us here in the foreground. Yeah. When I look at the value of it, and then I look at the tree that's immediately to the left of it, the bigger tree, not the nope. tree in between. Mm, value, color, you know, and then the trees that are directly across from it, um, far to the left on the other side of the stream. Right. Again, all of those values and colors seem to be pretty much so the same. Yeah, I, I, after I said it, I looked at it again, I got the same impression. <laughs> yeah. And and so what that does is it kind of flattens it out, you know. Right. It tells right. you that everything is equally close to you, right? Yeah. And then, you know, as you get further back, you know, toward the back, I see. Can you guys see my where the cursor is? Yeah. Moving yeah. through, like back in this area. See, it does. It gets grayed down a little bit softer, right? Right. But the thing that really helps it here is, you know, one the intensity of the color is lower, but it's also a softer shape. You know, you took the time, you know, there, there was a little more water there. Right. And, and it softened those shapes up. Now, as you move back behind it, again, you kept these really sharp. And over in here, same thing. And these are, you know, fairly far away from you. So right. as you move back, 
you have to modify the color, but you also have to modify the edges and and make them not quite so sharp. Other, otherwise, again, it flattens out the painting and particularly like in watercolor because you're going to get a lot of, you know, fairly distinct sharp edges in watercolor anyway, just where you're working from one wet area into a dry area. Right. <clears throat> And that's that's one of the that's actually one of the more challenging things about watercolor is you know avoiding those sharp edges and things that will kind of flatten out the painting. So uh, so just kind of think about that more. You know when you're doing things like this, because you know they're good exercises. But it's like okay, so how do I really push things back in the distance, and then how do I really bring things forward and get that depth of field you know that you would really have if you were standing out there you know in in a landscape like that okay yep uh the other thing is two shadows uh you don't you don't really seem to have any and on a snowy day um even if it's i mean there seems to be a lot of light out there so you yep. definitely have some shadows casting some shadows in one direction or another. Okay. So think about that too. And particularly on snow, they would show up. All right. Um, and then we have uh this scene. Okay. Now this is this is what we talked about last week, and it was the same, the same issue. The 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 trees in the back were too uh, too intense. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I tried to um Soften those and lighten those things. Yeah, and uh, and and you did, <laughs> okay. I, 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 did. <laughs> I, I and I would say that you were successful at doing that, okay. And in in this painting, when you look at it, you know you have this nice contrast between what's really in the foreground uh -huh. to the middle ground, and then to the background. So you really do have, you know, three separate areas in the painting. Um, you know, the house and these trees all seem to fall into the foreground. The edges are sharper, the, va you know, a little more value contrast in there, um, more intensity of color in some places, right? Yep. And then, when, then when you move back, you still have some edges and things back in there, but it's softer, you know, same thing back in here. So you get sort of the illusion of, okay, so there's some texture there, there's some forms, we can still see it. And then when you go back past that, you still get some shapes and things, but the color is much more muted and softer. And so it really does push, you know, this whole area back, you know, this whole ridge line and mm -hmm. makes it look, you know, like there's maybe some mist or something in the air. And you, and you get this nice kind of atmospheric effect there. Yeah, so. that's a, there was, that's one that had, the, the picture I had, there were ash out my window, I saw it. The, uh, the, 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 the skyline, the, the tree line and the tops of the trees were all in dense fog, but the uh, angle of the, the sun brightened up the foreground. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's, a, it's a nice idea and a nice kind of composition, you know, that you've got, you know, working right now. And it's, uh, you know, this this one is a lot more successful than the previous one, okay? Yes. And uh, about the only thing I would comment other than those things, you know, because they're it, it works really pretty well, is I guess, you know, when you get right here in the bottom corner, you know, the bottom right-hand corner, uh-huh. You know, you probably could have put a little more color, a little more intensity of the color right in there. I don't know what that was supposed to be, whether it's supposed to be just open ground or or whatever, but well, it's supposed to be water. <laughs> oh water? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, well, okay, if it's water, then you could put some reflections in there. You know, you could probably bring. Well, I, well, I tried a little bit. If you can see, there is. I tried a little bit of reflection. Yeah, but again, I think you like 
if this is the edge of that tree right there, then you could put yeah. some color in there. Same thing with this house. You know, again, it's going to have a stronger reflection in it. And then it would read more like water. I think. <laughs> Just my opinion. Okay. 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 Anybody else? Anybody see anything they want to mention or talk about? Well, well I have an idea for you, uh, John. If you like the trees in the in the uh, foreground here, if you start out very light, and when it's still a little damp, put a little more uh, color on it. It won't be so uh, so um, like those trees in the other picture. If you started out with a a lighter, a more muted color, and then slowly put a little bit different color on top of it, it would make it look more. Uh, not all all of them look alike. Uh -huh. So are you talking about starting off in the background with? No, I'm starting talking off in the foreground. If you start off with something light, you can always make it darker. But you, you don't work from dark to light. You work from light to dark. So everything yeah, ought to be dark. fairly light with yeah. the water, enough water so it won't look so thick to start with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then as you go in the background, since it's light, you can, you can change your color value or more muted color as you go further back. Mm -hmm. And then you can go when you go pass it pass over it again you can either dampen it a little bit or put the or put the uh, dry on dry or wet on dry or wet on wet right uh, yeah. and and you make the color changes in that with a little less color until you get to the very front and there should be more color to the front because it's closer because mm -hmm. yeah. it's a suggestive water color it's got to be more water to it to me but that's mm -hmm. just my opinion. Okay. Well, and that's, you know, that's a pretty sound idea, actually. I mean, there are a lot of watercolor artists who really start off with their more neutral colors. Right. And then work forward because they, you right. know, once they get those initial passages down, it's much easier to put like a really intense color over something right. that's neutral, you know, and it will really pop it up. And uh, and so you know, yeah, that's a that's a good way of approaching it. Yeah. Well, it's just I try different things, and I the, the suggestion was just so you try something different. That's all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anybody else? Armando, we know you have to have something to say. No. No. <laughs> okay. All right. So. Uh, all right, and so this is a, a figure. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's I, nice. Yeah, that's from Friday. You know, Friday, not this last Friday, but from Friday a week ago in the drawing. Right, room. right. Yeah, and you're using Conte, right, John? That's that's Conte, correct? Yeah. Okay. Mm. All right, and that was a that was a nice figure to draw because there was a lot of overlapping shapes. There was definitely some foreshortening going on there with that leg coming forward. And things and you you manage most of that pretty well. Um, you got a fairly good variety of line work in there, uh, and you've got some indication of the shadow, you know, being to the left side of the figure. Uh, the only thing I'd say to you is that with that shadow on the face and and on the left side of the arm, and <coughs> maybe even around the kneecap. Uh -huh. uh, if you just took your finger and just, I'm not saying, you know, blur it out totally, but just kind of go over it slightly. Right. Soften that. Um, that would give you the contrast that you need between the left side of the arm and the right side of the arm. Now, I, I realize that there's a lot of compression going on right here in the armpit and uh, as, as the arm's laying against the breast. So the line would be sharper and it would was dark like that right yep um, and there was pretty much a shadow you know all the way down the arm um but yeah just to vary those i would just kind of soften that back just a little bit along here and along the face right yeah and the thing that you didn't get to that probably would have helped you with that arm as well you know this side of it is that there was a shadow really on this part of the body, you know, the torso and the front side. Right. 
Yeah, and all the light was back here. And so if you could have just gotten some tone in there and dark in that area, like right in there down just a bit, um, again, it would have kind of well, this this was this was the uh, the first part of the assignment. Just to do it in line, doing a line, and I took a picture there, and then I went in with my uh, eraser and picked out highlights. That's the one, the other one I had sent with the. With the we oh, talked about right. we talked about it last week. So yeah. uh, from this, I went in then with the eraser and put in a few more shadows and. Uh, uh, highlights of the eraser okay all right so this yeah. is the first this is the first stage right yeah just the line work okay yeah yeah i'm getting old my memory's fading you know i, I forgot <laughs> that i had to break it down into two two parts so all right but yeah in that case you know then just take your finger like i said over on that left right. side of the arm just just soften it back a little bit okay yep and that would that would help it turn a little bit. All right, the moment that we've all been waiting for. Drum roll. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. Jean and her turtles. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Now we looked at these last week, and uh, and Jean was not here, but now she is. So we're going to talk about them again. Now uh, you're working on Upo, right? Yes. Right. And for those of you who are not familiar with what UPO is, it's uh, a lot of watercolor artists have taken to working on that. And it's very similar to Mylar. Anybody know what Mylar was? It, like this frosted or clear plastic? No. Yeah, yeah I remember that. Yeah. Um, but UPO is kind of like that. It's It's got kind of that consistency. Um and I've I've seen it come in fairly thin sheets, and I've seen it come in very thick sheets as well. But the nice thing about Upo is that you get it wet, and it doesn't buckle and wrinkle. Right. You know, it it will lay perfectly flat for you, and that's why I think a lot of watercolor artists really like working on it. And it's uh, you're working on the stuff that's got kind of a frosted surface on it, right, Jean? Well, what do you mean by that? Cross surface. Well, it's I think to me, it's like wax paper with a white coating on it because the paint's very slippery. Uh -huh. But it's, it's yeah, it's it's opaque or kind of opaque, right? Not really. I just it's my regular watercolors. It's the same thing I use on regular paper. No, no, I'm okay. saying I'm saying the UPO itself when you hold oh, it up oh. to the light, it's, it's kind light, of it's lightweight and very slick. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm good. Right, I'm put you downstairs. Okay. But yeah, I mean, it's become, you know, a pretty popular thing for watercolor artists to work on. You know, I've <laughs> tried it and uh, I guess I work too wet with watercolor and um, I find it really hard to control things on it. Yeah, it so, is very difficult. Yeah. But it, it was fun to mess with. But I liked it because when it ends up, it looks like a seawater. It looks like it's in water because well, it's and, so slippery It's and hard to control. It just automatically... To me, kind of looks like the stuff in the bottom of the sea. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's the thing, you know, for for the images that you were doing. Yes. You know, I think it's really a good, appropriate material to use because it does give you that very kind of fluid, watery look to it. Right, right. That's that's what I was going for. Yeah. And in this piece, and then uh, I'm going to go ahead and show the other piece. Because it okay, well, the other both. one was my first piece, and I purposely tried to well, break the water over the turtle. And that's, you said you couldn't judge the turtle because of the... Well, hang on. Okay, okay. I'm hanging. This is, this is the other person, or the other oh, piece I was No, this about. is the last piece I did. This is a four by six. This is the smallest piece. Okay, but these two pieces, right? This piece and this piece. Yes. I think are way more successful than the first one. Than the first one you sent it. Okay. It's just when I when I look at these two pieces and particularly this piece, right. um, the way you handle the media, and evidently you're getting used to working on this surface because you're getting some control. 
over it. A little bit, not much, but on a smaller piece, it's easier to control. Yeah. But both of these are really, really nice pieces. I mean, you know, I think you nailed it on both of these. Well, thank you. Yeah. You know. Okay. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Now, now we'll go talk bad about the first piece. <laughs> okay, that well, that's the one that I started with. Right, I broke the surface up with with a with a brush with no with just water on it to make it look like it was a was a current like breaking over the shell. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. There's there's some you know, my only issue with this particular. You know, uh, this this particular painting mm -hmm. is the turtle. You know, okay. It's, there's something awkward about, you know. I mean, you're kind of seeing the top, you're kind of seeing the bottom. You know, it's just, it, yeah, it it yeah. looks kind of awkward. Where the other two turtles read really clearly. You know, you know exactly yeah. what they are. Um, and then I also like the fact that with the water see in this piece it's all kind of running horizontal right right dr right. john chip read in in the other two pieces you see it's looser it's right. more directional it's right. much this is it. yeah much more dynamic right than uh um, uh -huh. uh -huh. you know than the other two pieces right or the other piece okay well that was the purpose of doing the other two because you told me about that the first time and I wanted to see the reason for the other two was to try and correct some of the things that you said yeah we're not were really objectionable I, I and I see what you're uh, you know and that's the reason I tried the other two just to, to see uh if I couldn't uh, make it work better yeah well you did that's good okay so yeah I mean these are both you know the the two later pieces Right. Both of them, I think, are really nicely done. You know, I mean, they're really, really nice little pieces. So, yeah. you know, cool beans. So, okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, guess I, what? I got accomplished. Yeah. Yes, you did. Yes. And you did very well with it. Okay. So, that's, that's pretty much so everything, you know, that everybody mm -hmm. sent in. Uh, I got a couple of pieces. I don't know whether did I share this with you guys? Have you guys seen this book? Oh. Okay. Yes, yes, we did. Oh, okay. Well, what about the the guy the lady on top? I think you got two more there. Scudding. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah, I got a couple that I'm I'm getting to them, Armando. One at a time, okay. Um anyway, this is a when I was out painting in West Virginia, okay. Uh I was there by the roadside and there were all these different plants and things growing, you know, around me. And uh, and this, so this is a pretty good sized watercolor. It's on like about an 18 by 24 sheet. And uh, I, I call this, you know, you know, all the little things we miss. Uh, just because it's, you know, driving down the road, you'd never see any of this stuff. You know, you'd never really notice it. But, you know, there were all these really, really beautiful wild flowers and things growing you know, out there in that canyon. And uh, so I just decided to, to do a watercolor of it. And uh, it was kind of fun. So, um, and then this is from a life drawing class a couple of weeks ago. And so we had a model and all I did is I took acrylic paint and this is in my sketchbook. And uh, a lot of times when I have leftover acrylic paint, you know, that's just going to dry up. I'll I'll open up my sketchbook and I'll I'll tone a page with it, and then I'll draw on top of it. So, you know, I tone the page in this kind of purpley color um, because that's what I ended up with when I mixed all the acrylic that was left over together. Anyway, um, when I was doing the drawing, these are two and a half minute drawings. And they're done with a uh, a brush pen, okay? Oh, okay. And so, you know, and I like brush pens. You know, they're pretty expressive. Um, you can get, you know, some variation and stuff with them. And then I, you know, once I got the figure down, uh, I had some acrylic paint. Uh, and this is a what they call buff titanium. It's the color. 
which is a slightly has a slightly yellowish color to it. Anyway, I just uh, I just use that for a highlight, you know, on the figure, just to kind of place where the light was hitting her. Um, this is the longer painting, and this is uh, you know she was sitting, and she, you know, no, she didn't have any hair. You know, she basically shaved her head. Um, but yeah, she sat for so this is about a two hour painting. And then this, this is the roses that I did in watercolor. And, uh, you know, I just took a little bit of water and I softened the one in the back. So I'm happier with it. So not too bad. And then this is a, a Conte drawing that I did of, uh, this was a model that worked with me a good number of years ago now. Her name is Claire. Anyway, you know, beautiful young girl. Anyway, she uh, had a photo of her, so I, I did the drawing. And we actually did this drawing on Friday, you know, as uh, one of the drawings that we did. And then, John, I think I talked to you about this one. This is a watercolor I did. And this was uh, up in West Virginia. And uh, I would started this. And this is inside one of my sketchbooks. And uh, and so I worked on it a little bit more and finished it. But when I when I saw the one that you submitted, I think it was about a week ago, maybe two weeks ago. You know, it was really it really felt familiar. <laughs> like, wait a minute, I've got one, you know, very much so like that. So anyway, this is uh, so this is finished now. And. Uh, and then last but not least, this is just a little design. Um, you know, I really, I'm, you know, I really like kind of the arts and crafts uh, era of design. And so, you know, I was just playing around with this. And, uh, and this is my little chop that I signed my paintings with. And so I just used it, you know, as a graphic. But it was kind of fun to do. And this is a metallic watercolor that I got out of uh, Japan. And uh, I really love that stuff. I mean, it's I've, I've got several different metallics um, that came in that set. And just the quality of the stuff is really good. Uh, it's really opaque. It's very reflective. It really does look gold. It's, uh, it's about the closest thing to a real metallic gold that I've been able to find in a uh, in kind of a water based medium, and uh, I wish I could find anything even nearly that good in like an oil paint, but I haven't found one yet. So, but uh, this is this is about the best one I found. Yeah. I'd like to, the previous uh, watercolor uh, uh, of the autumn scene. Was your fence done with paint with the opaque watercolor paint for the fence, or did no. you leave is that? That's paper. That's yeah. That's just saved in the way of paper. Yeah. I just I, that's what I wondered. Yeah. So I'm just kind of painting around, and the okay. same thing with the barn and the house. You know, those yes. just very light washes over them. Right. But it's it's mainly just the light of the paper. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't I didn't use anything opaque on this. It was all watercolor. I'm just curious. Yeah, but it's the you left the white in the clouds too. Or I say white, the paper in the clouds too. It really looks nice. Mm -hmm. I, I I got to wondering that the fence was done so well. I didn't know if it was a, a overpainting with the white or if you, if it was really left because it's very hard to keep your hand that's unshaken. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it takes a lot of patience, you know, because yeah. you gotta. You know, you got to keep in mind that, yeah, okay, I want to save what's in there. Yeah. Yeah. It's so you got to work. Yeah. In fact, that was probably the most difficult part you know, of the whole painting, you know, was just saving those whites out and not, you know, not having it kind of smudge or blur, you know, right. the shape of the fence line. So oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing with the tree trunks back in here, you know. Just yeah. saving those whites up until, you know, and that's really kind of one of the last things you do is come back in yeah. over the tree trunks and things and right. tone them down to get them to kind of sit where you want 
you know, as far as, you know, moving them forward or backward in the composition. Right. Yeah. Anyway, anybody got anything else before we move on? Come on, don't be shy. No? Oh, I like it. Uh, okay. I like yeah, that's right. right. Mm -hmm. Oh, Armando's back from having a sandwich, huh? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. <laughs> late late lunch. Late, late lunch. Huh? Okay. Late uh, breakfast. Late okay. dinner. Well, look, we're we're done with the uh, critique part thing. Um, would you guys like to look at some of the work from the plein air salon? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. They, you know, they got they got some really nice pieces in that. Uh, I think they were, I think total, they had like 3,500 pieces submitted. Wow. Mm. Yeah, it's, yeah, a lot of people submit to that. And the reason that I wanted to, okay, let's see, let's close that. All right, are you guys seeing a snow scene? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Good. Um, and the reason that I really kind of wanted to to run through this, and I'm going to run through it fairly quickly, and we can kind of talk about who these people are. I'm going to have to lower it or make it slightly smaller so I can read the top of the... Uh, okay, good. Because I want to be able to read the size and the medium and the name. Because I, I saved all of those on the, on the file so that we can talk about them. Uh, so like, for example, this is an oil, okay? And it's a 14 by 18, okay? Um, and, you know, it feels, you know, very much so like a, a plain air piece. You know, it's got a nice kind of immediacy to it. And notice that, you know, this guy didn't, spend a lot of time, you know, trying to paint every little tree branch, you know, you get the main trunks and you got the seal, you know, for the trees and things. Um, and it works, you know, pretty well. The, uh, the only comment that I have about this piece is it's a little bit flat, you know, I think uh, it could have been better if he would have taken a big brush and you know once he got all this stuff in here particularly in this area if he would have just lightly kind of raked over it to blur it a little bit you know just take the edge off of it so it would really move back you know in the distance and he probably could have done the same thing with you know most of this area back in here as well yeah i think the same thing that whole middle area is yeah yeah, it's just, you know, just, just tapping it down or knocking it back just a little bit uh, could have made a huge difference in this painting uh, and really made it, you know, something that would probably win an award. Um, again, you know, it's not a real big piece. It's 14 by 18. But, uh, you know, it's not a bad snow scene. Uh, this piece, well, wait a minute. No, that's actually a photo. That's from Tim Young. All right, yeah, fish. Okay, so somebody's got you know a bunch, a bunch of fish, you know, that they caught in a bucket. Um, but how they have the eyes on the tail? Well, they don't. It's a spot, and oh. it's, uh, what is what is it? Uh, yeah, a bucket of tails. Uh, and it's, have you ever caught a sunfish? I never fish. Okay. Well, there's a, it, some people call them brim. Uh, some people call them sunfish. But yeah, if you go to like a lot of these little creeks and stuff and fish, there's a particular species of fish that you can catch. And they've got these, uh, like a black spot. And it's usually on the side of their gill. And a lot of times they'll have like spots and things down by their tail as well. And some of them are very colorful. Some of them are a little bit more subdued, but yeah. So I'm I'm pretty sure that these are sunfish that they caught. Uh, this was a really nicely done piece. 
Uh, it's called a, uh, a Fiery Autumn Day. And uh, the artist was Tao Song. And they were from Massachusetts. Size is 16 by 22. And it's in the oil. And it's really nicely painted. Um, it reminds me a little bit of like Richard Schmidt's work. You know, it's got this looseness uh, to it. And uh, until you get right down to the focal point, which is really that green house <clears throat> there. And then all the edges kind of come together and sharpen up at the focal point. But, you know, I think it was kind of nice, you know, the brushwork and stuff in it. It's, again, you know, it's just a suggestion of trees around it. But it's almost abstract. Um, this piece, I thought it was an interesting perspective. It's a watercolor. And, you know, it's a nice, nice sample of how you push things forward and backward. And, you know, this artist got, you know, a really good sense of distance and depth. And notice how, you know, particularly like back in the, you know, toward the, the mountain and the hillside, I'll blow that up. It got softer. You know, they, they went in and they really softened you know, they softened up a lot of these edges mm -hmm. and kept the intensity of the color down so that all of this stuff back here sat back. And then the things in the middle and the foreground, you know, felt a little bit sharper, a little more contrast and came forward, right? So I, I think generally, you know, they handled that pretty well. And that, you know, that would be a fairly complicated you know that's a hard perspective to do yeah yeah oh boy yeah but i think they pulled it off pretty well um there's this piece now you know i i would basically say with this piece that again what they're struggling with is it's kind of flat and again, you know, it's it's kind of fighting with edges and then also modifying the color. Um, you know, we, we know that these are all pine trees in here. But again, you know, changing the value and lowering the intensity of some of them, you know, particularly the ones in the back, bringing them out a little bit, could have really made a big difference in this painting and really given it some nice depth. Um, you know, overall, you know, the composition and the idea is really strong, really nice. And they could have done, you know, some really beautiful stuff, you know, as far as really pulling that rock and some of the water forward and then pushing those tree lines back by just softening it just, just a tad, you know, and then kind of graying some things back as they move back. It could have been, you know, a really nice, strong painting. But that's that's the thing about this competition is you get you know you get people at all kinds of levels, okay. Now I'm familiar with this painting because I submitted it, and this is one of mine. And uh, and this is a what was it nine by twelve? Yeah, and I painted this uh, not far, you know, from where I am right now. It was down like. Uh, you know, toward Austell, you know, out in the field one morning. So, uh, there's this figure piece. And this was done by that same guy, you know, Tao Song. And, um, you know, it's, it's very kind of sketchy, very just sort of quick and suggestive. And it's an oil. You know, again... It's, it's like, you know, softening areas, you know, and, and pushing and pulling some space, you know, could have really helped with this one. Now, this piece, I love. I mean, you know, I think this artist did a great job, you know, at really, it's got some nice color in there. It, it really kind of pulls your eye back into the distance. Um it just, you know, has a nice feel to it. You know, it almost looks like the, a watercolor. Well, yeah, 
It does. Uh, it, yeah, it's an oil. Uh, yeah, I knew that. I saw that. Yeah, but just you know the subtlety of the color and and you know it just got a really nice feel to it. Uh, kind of reminds me of some of the work that an artist by the name of Wayne Tebow did. Uh, very much so, you know, kind of in those color ranges and things, but really beautifully done. And nice, you know, nice sort of abstraction and simplification of, you know, like the tree and even the grasses in the foreground and things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they kept it very painterly and simplified things, you know, quite a yeah. bit. But, you know, really nice, strong piece. Um There's a, now this is a, a plain air piece. Now there's an eight by 10, you know. And the, uh, a lot of the pieces that were actually done plain air, you know, you can really look at them and tell, you know, they look more immediate and, you know, they don't necessarily have everything worked out perfectly. You know, where you look at this painting and uh, this is a 30 by 40, by the way. So this was done in the studio. And so this artist had plenty of time. They really thought this through. They probably did a whole series of like little color thumbnails, things like that, you know, before they launched into actually finishing, you know, or, or getting into the finished piece. You know, this piece was done live, you know, somewhere. And, you know, they were struggling with the same thing that a lot of you, you know, have struggled with when we've gone out and painted before, which is the lights constantly changing. You know, you got to kind of decide how much you're really going to kind of take on there. And uh, you know, for a for a, a plain air piece overall, you know, I think they did a fairly good job. You know, um, and a lot of these plain air pieces that you see, you can really tell the difference between something that was done in the studio and something that was you know plain air. Um, this is a watercolor, beautifully done. Take a look, John. Yes, I see. <laughs> yeah, it's quite nice. It's quite yeah, nice. it really yeah. is. Yeah, it's got this. It's it's got this really nice atmospheric feel feel to it. Very much. Yeah. Yeah, and you know the whites that they saved out in the water and stuff really do kind of feel like you know sunlight hitting that water. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, very, very nice. You know, and I like the element, you know, rather than just bringing the water all the way down and letting it run off the bottom, they added these elements in here, you know, to put something in the foreground. Yeah. And really kind of layer it so that it, you know, moves backward in space. <laughs> yeah, I put a couple of watercolors in here, you know. You know, for any, any of you guys who work in watercolor. Is there, there's some very nice watercolor pieces in here. Um, you know, this is an oil. And, uh, you know, it was more than likely, it was probably done, you know, plein air, you know, out there, you know, actually painting. And, uh, you know, for what, what this person took on, you know, which were all these clouds and, you know, the water moving and, you know, the, the houses and all the architecture there. You know, I they really kind of bit off, you know, a lot more than I think that you could chew, you know, in a short a power, you're really kind of a short period of time. But you know, they handled it pretty well. You, you still have a nice sense of atmosphere to it. Did any um, of these have prizes to them? Um, we don't know yet. I mean, these are the pieces that were submitted. Okay. Okay. And I didn't download them all. Like I said, there was probably right. 3,500 of them. Um, but, you know, I probably downloaded about a third of them, right? Well, not even that, you know, probably a couple hundred. Um, and then, you know, once I downloaded like the first, you know, 50 or so, it's, I just kind of figured out, you know, I got to, I got to skip a lot of these and just kind of pull down the ones that I kind of want to share with you guys. Um, because yeah, it would it would take a week, you know, to download everything, tidy right. and stuff. 
but again, you know, this is a, a little plein air piece. Um, again, you know, if you look at the brushwork and it's done in oil, you know, it's very kind of immediate, you know, kind of loose, which is good, you know, very nice. I, and again, you know, they took, you know, they took a subject that you would kind of look over most of the time and they really made, you know, kind of a nice composition out of it. You know, the, uh, the sunflowers and things up in the foreground with the lamppost and then the, the trees and the wall as a backdrop. I think they handled that pretty well. This is another watercolor and uh, beautifully done. Very nice, yeah. Yeah, and it's not very large. It's only a, like an eight and a half by 11. And, uh, but, you know, this, this person, you know, who is this? You're back. Um, Mal, Mayor, Mara? Uh, at any rate, yeah. The person who painted this, they had a plan. You know, they figured this out, you know, before they, before they started slapping paint down. Um, you know, and they really kind of built up the layers of watercolor really nicely. You know, got some nice volume and form, you know, in the horses, which are, you know, the focal point. And then, but do you really think this is plain air? I mean, uh, no, 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 <laughs> no, I don't think this is plain air. Not at all. Yeah. So the horses wouldn't, yeah. But they wouldn't stand there and pose for an hour. <laughs> no, no, no. And, and see, here's the thing about, you know, this competition. Uh, they probably have like 20 different categories. And you could submit it as a plein air piece or as a studio painting. Ah, okay. okay. You know, so yeah, this is a mix of all kinds of things. You know, you can submit it, you know, based on the medium, you know, watercolor. They don't, they don't judge watercolors against oils, against pastels. You know, they separate them, you know, for the uh, competition. So, um. Now here's something that could drive you crazy. You know, and this was a, a Chinese artist um, from China. <laughs> and it's, uh, what is it? It's 32 by 24 and it's an acrylic. But, uh, you know, when you first look at this, you don't see much, you know, because of the scale of it. But let me blow this up. Yeah. It almost looks like pointillism from, from it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. But it's, you know, they really, you know, this is a pretty good sized piece. And they really did kind of work out, you know, a lot of the structure of the rock and the, you know, the soil. And it, you know, and even the water in there. And I thought they did a pretty good job, you know. Um, yeah you know, using acrylic paint and just the surface, you know, the paint surface of things, you know, I, th I think they, you know, really kind of pulled together a really nice little painting out of it. Um, it works for me. It works more when you blow it up and you can get, like, I think seeing it in person um, at the scale that it is, it would be a fairly impressive painting. Um, reduced, you know, I think the way that the judges are going to, you know, see it, I, I think I'd go back to the drawing board on it. I mean, it's, it's not a bad painting. It, it is, but, uh, you know, but it doesn't have, you know, like this, like really dy dynamic feel to it. It doesn't really just catch your attention. It's, it's pretty subtle. Um, you know, and when I kind of compare this to say the composition of the horses, you know, that works a lot better. You know, this, you kind of look at it and like, what is that? And you slowly, you begin to figure it out, you know, but it is, it's really nicely painted. It's just, you know, I think competition wise, um, probably would have put something else in it does it doesn't read that clearly um this piece you know again you know it's a it's a 12 by 16 more than likely it was painted plain air um 
you know, just looking at the brushwork and stuff on it. And it's it's handled really nicely. Um, you know, this is a nice piece. Again, now this is a, you know, 24 by 36, and it's an oil. Uh, this is not a plein air piece, <laughs> and you can tell, you know. Right. Yeah. You know, but again, looking at the composition and sort of the whole kind of story and the narrative to it, you know, it's a really well thought out piece. You know, it's really nicely done. Um, here's a nicely painted landscape. And again, this is a big piece. This is a 39 by 39. So it's it's definitely a studio painting, not a, uh, a live like plein air. Now they could have gone out here and they could, you know, they probably went to this place and did some plein air studies, you know, to really get a sense of the light and shadow, you know, before they did this. This is a worldwide competition? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you get you get. Yes, uh, I'm just trying looking to figure out if they're from SP. I don't know. I don't know where SP is. <laughs> yeah. Um. You get uh, artists submitting from Europe, you know, South America, North America, you know, Asia. I mean, it, you know, anywhere, everywhere. Uh, a lot of Canadian artists, you know, submit. So yeah, this is this is open to anybody anywhere. You know, here's another piece. And again, you know, one of the reasons I wanted to show you these, and I've talked to each and every one of you about this before. It's like, you know, like if Jean, you know, submitted her turtles, you know, I mean, those are easily as strong as, you know, most of these pieces here. There's, there's no reason why she wouldn't submit things, you know, to shows like this. And it's a, it's a good way to get your work out there, you know, and get- That was a pastel, right? The past... Yes, this is, and, and the previous piece was- I Yeah, that's really, it's really nice. Yeah. Yeah, the pastels of, you know, I mean, you really always get some like really, really nice color with pastels. And uh, it's, it's a great medium to work in. You know, I mean, this is, you know, it's a lovely piece. Um, nice shapes, nice contrast, good composition. So here's this guy again. You know, we all know him. This is a, another piece that I had submitted. Uh, and this is 11 by 14. It's an oil. Uh, this is a a piece now this is bigger this is 30 by 26 and this artist uh william rogers i guess and he's from nova scotia so you know i mean for as large as this painting is um you know i i, I think he probably could have done a, a better job you know at at the figure um, you know, if this piece were like a 16 by 20 or something, okay, you know, a little bit looser style, but with as big as this is, I mean, I think he could have done more with this. And it, it's a good subject. Um, you know, just not handled quite as well. Now, this is a good friend of mine. Actually, I went to school with her. This is, and we've looked at her work before. This is uh, Camille. Uh, Prizwatic, and uh, she was one of the last students of uh, Herman Hinchy, and so she's kind of carrying on the the uh, American colorist um, uh, ideals, you know, her and the Boston School, but she does, you know, really nice, you know, really strong work, um, and again, this is fairly small, it's 11 by 14, it's an oil. And I saw this, I think I saw it in Planet Magazine. But again, you know, you have people who are kind of her caliber, who are, you know, pretty well known and, um, you know, recognized 
internationally. And then you've got, you know, everybody else. So it's a real mixed bag as to who enters work, you know, in this competition. But you know, it's a great place to get your work show. It's a, you know, again, if, you know, if you win any of the categories, you know, again, you know, it's a, it's a nice step up, you know, to getting your work out there and, and getting collectors to look at it. And it really kind of opens up, uh, you know, some possibilities for you. Yeah. It's a really nicely done piece. Now this is again. It's twenty four by thirty six. It's it's a big oil, so it's a studio paint. But you know, really nice control of value, intensity, you know, composition. You know, it's really nice, solid painting. Like this piece. Now this again, it's a large piece. It's studio, but again, you know, there's kind of a nice narrative thing. You know, two people, you know, at the beach. Hadn't quite figured this one out. But again, <laughs> all kinds of things get submitted. So, and it, you know, honestly, I mean, it's good to see things like this. You know, I mean, people experimenting and trying different things. It looks like the Michelangelo's creation of Adam. And yeah, 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 very much so, you know, from that theme, but you know, obviously treated in a very different way. So, um, you know, fairly simple little pain, you know, but you know, pretty nicely done, good concept, you know, for me, when I'm looking at this they started getting into a little more tight detail and stuff on the uh on the the flowers and things in the foreground and i really wish they would have gone you know just a lot further and really kind of tighten that up because they have just enough abstraction in the middle ground and the background to where they really could have pulled that off and made that work you know really nicely so now, again, that's not a big painting, but still, you know, taking a little bit of time just to, uh, you know, kind of really, you know, push that a little bit more. I think they really could have had like a really nice painting that could have actually, you know, won something. Um, not an easy subject. <laughs> you know, these uh, fishing boats and things. It's very kind of monotone, but you know, again, you know, nicely handled. But there again, you can feel the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they definitely had an idea, you know, when, when they went into this, and this is more than likely, this is a plain air piece. They probably could have cleaned it up in the studio a bit, but, um, but it looks, you know, like something that was, you know, done from life and fairly immediate. And I was saying with this, now this is on, um, this is eight by 10, you know, but, you know, knowing, knowing what it takes to go outside and actually paint on location and to, you know, to be able to get something like this down, you know, on an eight by 10 canvas, you know, while, you know, all this other stuff is going on around you and the lights changing and everything else, you know came out with a pretty good result. You know, I'd feel pretty good about that, you know, at the end of the day. I really like this piece. Now this, again, this is a studio painting. It's a, what, 30 by, 36 by 48, yeah. Uh, but you, you know that, you know, this is not a historical cowboy painting. You know, this is more contemporary. The guy's sitting there with a fly rod, you know, fishing in a string. And, you know, it's something that, you know, you could see happen today. So, a really nice little uh, a la prima piece, you know, eight by 10. And, you know, we talk about, you know, painting, 
you know, forms and about how to, uh, you know, how to get, you know, something to feel three-dimensional and looking for those, at least those five values. Um, you know, this, this onion right here, you know, is a really good study in that, you know, just how they kind of chiseled out the planes and it works really nicely and it does. It really feels like it's got, you know, some nice three-dimensional volume to it. I wish they would have done, you know, as well, you know, on the jars and actually changing the value as it went around so that it felt, you know, you really kind of felt the change in playing and, and direction more. Yeah. This is an acrylic piece, right? Now a little uh, a little charcoal drawing. It's probably done on site. And again, it's uh, not big. It's eleven by six and a half. So, but really nice little gestural drawing of some trees. Um, again, you know, nice little a la prima piece. Again, you know, this kind of reminds me of an artist by the name of Wayne Kubo who painted all the uh, desserts and the cakes and stuff. So, you yeah, know, this is that uh, candy corn from Halloween. And uh, another little, uh, you know, probably a plain air piece. Nice color, you know, nice, nice composition on it. You know, good range of value. Uh, this is another one of my pieces that I submitted. So, this was, you know, in the animal category. They have one of those. So, um, now, this is Connie Riley. Connie Riley is uh, another local Georgia artist. And uh, she works a lot in pastel. But, you know, really lovely piece. You know, really clean, really nicely finished piece. You know, it's not impressionistic at all. It's, uh, you know, really nice kind of turning form, you know, on the petals of the flowers and the leaves and things. So really solidly done, really nice. Um, nice little, again, you know, kind of idea, you know, two people swimming and just their heads popping out. Okay. Yeah. Cruising collection is the name of this. Now this is the same person who did the uh you know the the two hands, you know, from the Sistine Chapel. So we got Ben Franklin. So they're def definitely trying to uh kind of create a style or a look to their work. This is a nice little piece. Well, not so little. It's 24 by 18. So, but again, you know, got a lot of kind of a nice atmosphere feel to it. Uh, this is Connie Riley again. She was the lady who did the flowers. She does a lot of portraits, you know, botanicals, she does some plein air, yeah. but really lovely work. And that's pastels again. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think she may do some watercolors or things, but her main thing is pastel. Yeah. Um, you know, again. Kind of a desert scene. Um, like I said, you know, you get people at all kinds of different levels here. So. Yeah, that looks real flat. It is. It's very flat. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, they're getting, you know, they're getting the idea. You know, they've got some contrast and value and push color a little bit in the foreground. So, you know, it's not totally flat. It's just, you know, it's not. Is, is, there, a, is there a beginner's category? Uh, no, no, there's not. 
you know. Really dynamic piece. Uh, again, it's a, a big painting, you know, it's a 2430. really kind of like this piece it was you know i mean very striking you know a good concept good idea you know obviously it's not a plain air piece but it's uh you know still an interesting painting and another watercolor you know really really nicely handled you know nice water and the boat and the you know reflected light up onto the hull of the boat and all the trees and things in the background. It really does kind of, you know, separate out really nicely. So. Nice little figure study. It's a 16 by 20. Very painterly, very kind of simplified brush strokes to it. Yeah. But it works, you know, really nicely. Um, it's nice. Really, really well done piece. This is acrylic, and uh, you know, just handling the uh, you know the color mixing and looking at the change in intensity and temperature from the foreground to the middle ground to the background, and I think they handled it pretty well. A really nice piece, right there. And uh, it's a watercolor, you know, but nice sense of movement to it. Um, now, again, big, you know, fairly good sized studio painting. This is another one of Camille's pieces, you know, a little kind of outdoor uh, figure study. Now, she travels around the country and she does a lot of workshops and stuff like that. So um, my guess is that this is probably a model that, you know, she had hired for one of her workshops. You know, and she was out doing a demo. Some old dobies. And uh, yeah, this is an oil. When I looked at this, I kind of thought, oh, okay, watercolor. No, it's an oil paint. So, fairly small paintings, news. Those would drive you crazy. So just trying to get those right. Woman out by her wood pile. Now, this is a pastel. And, um, uh, you know, I mean, at looking at the uh, kind of the textures and the change in color, you know, I mean, that pattern on her dress, you know, it's like, shoot me, please. <laughs> you know, this person really liked, you know, textures and things like that. Um, but it's it's really a nicely done piece, it really is. Here's a, a beautiful you know, kind of gestural watercolor. See, you don't have to have blue skies. Yeah. Um, here's a drawing. This person submitted a couple of different drawings. Really nicely done. Nice range of value and textures. And... Another oil painting. And this is a, a nine by 12. I'm guessing it was probably done plain air. Now here's a, a technique that I learned like a long, long time ago. You know, this is not my work, but I've seen this technique done. And what you basically do is you take uh, your canvas and you gesso it out and you really build up the gesso fairly thick on it. Uh, and then you take like a, a burnt or a raw sienna or an umber and, you know, you can mix mix them. And you basically cut out your whole board. 
you know. Um, and then after you get a coating of this, you know, <coughs> sienna color or the kind of brownish color, you basically lift out, you know, all of your lights and rub out areas and things, um, you know, you know, just saving your darks. So you're kind of working in reverse. Um, but it's it's a really nice technique. It's it's it was a way of kind of creating a uh, underpainting uh, as far back as you know in the Renaissance, and a lot of Renaissance art artists would take that approach and kind of work that way, um, where they were just lifting out oil. Yeah, you know, really nice kind of painterly feel to this. If this is a pastel, yeah. And this is small. This is only like six by eight. So nice little study. Um, yeah, okay. So this artist, you know, they submitted this drawing. And if you look at it, you can tell it's in their sketchbook. You know, they've got the scene, you know, like right in the middle. Um, and then they also submitted and they submitted both of these. Uh, they also submitted the final painting. Or at least, you know, no, this is a, well, yeah, 11 by 13. So this is probably the final painting, or at least the color study for it. That's interesting. Are those in like two different categories, you think? Yeah. Yeah, she submitted one in drawing and then one is probably in like figures. Yeah. So um you know, nice, really nice landscape. You know, or you know, quick kind of gestural idea of one. But really captured the intensity of the color in the sky in the morning. There's a pastel. You know, very quick kind of gestural. And uh, this is Camille again. Camille Frischwati. And again, I think this is probably, you know, from one of the workshops that she gives. You know, most women don't run around dressed up like that, you know, these days. So, you know, it was a, a costume model. out in Hawaii somewhere. Another another watercolor. Now, John, I want you to look at this watercolor. Okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> look, look at how light the sky is and how the ground itself, you know, generally the values you know, on the, the ground surfaces and things like that, you know, much darker than the sky. Yes. Yeah. And so you really got a nice, solid feeling of, okay, yes. yeah, it's a very believable landscape in watercolor. Really, really nice. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to keep this one in mind, you know, when you're out painting snow and trees and stuff like that. Okay. So. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the tree on the right, John. Look at the, how light it is, and then the, where the shadows are, are still right. moving, but you it it's just th thinner with the watercolor instead of the thickness of the. Yeah, you know? no, it's it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, they they got a really nice. They they kind of nailed that one pretty well. Yeah, some boats, and this is an oil. Yeah, 2436. Yeah, pretty good size. So as you can see, you know, I mean, there there really is work at all kinds of different levels here. And I would encourage any of you, you know, now again, this is, uh, well, this is Brenda Pinnock. This is another friend of mine, artist friend. She's local. A really, really nice little barn. This is a little oil piece that she did. And uh, what, 12 by 16? But really nicely painted. 
and would have been painted, you know, plein air for the most part. She probably cleaned that up in the studio a bit, but not a lot. I mean, you can see here where, you know, her easel, you know, was at the top of the board and she never went back in and, you know, painted, you know, the rest of the sky in and stuff. So. Yeah, another one of these, you know, don't ask me, but yeah, people put all kinds of stuff in there. <sighs> Thought this was a really nicely done piece. It's, uh, it's a good size, you know, it's 45 to 61. And it's an acrylic paint. Nice sense of light and atmosphere in this one. And this is a nine by 12. And um, it's done by Jill Stefani Wagner. And she, you know, I think she's had a couple of articles in Plain Air Magazine written about her. And I think she's she's taught at some of the, like the Plain Air Lives and the workshops and things. So, you know, good painter. But Look at the tree in the, in the middle, like to the, towards the left. It almost looks like a watercolor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, real, you know, it's in oil paint and, you know, fairly direct and thick, uh, but nice gestural paint strokes that right. really kind of follow the movement and stuff. So it really has a nice sort of active feeling to it. You know, uh, you get a sense of the trees moving, you know, in the wind and stuff. So. Uh, kind of a big grand landscape, you know, it's 11 by 14. This is a small painting. This is only a six by eight. But even though it's a six by eight, you know, still, and it's, uh, it, this is an oil. You know, composition, everything else, you know, work really nicely. Um, again, this is one of the things where... <clears throat> You know, they flattened out the painting a little bit, you know, again, because a lot of the intensity and value here is the same as here. And then the same with this mountain, <clears throat> you know, it's it's just a little too intense, you know, a little too hot. And if they would have just softened it, softened the edges or grade it back or did something to push it back further. You know, this would really be, you know, just a really nice little gem of a painting. So. That's nice. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. We're running out of time here. Again, this is another one of Camille's pieces. And it's really, you know, I mean, the way she handled the light and everything, it's really, really nice. Um, again, and, you know, I mean, she almost nailed this one. I mean, this is so close. And the only thing I'd say is that right up in here, she just got a little too hot, a little too intense with the color up in there. And it kind of flattened out the painting, you know? And it was, if she just like take it and knock those back, just gray them back just a little bit. You know, all of that would sit back in the back and let all of this, you know, move forward. So, what would you have used in the sky for color, and and how light would you have made it? Well, I, it's it's not the sky; it's these two pine trees right here. You see, they're the same intensity, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. and value as what she's got up in here, right? You know, right. and in that window, and it's just like if she would have just modified that, knocked that back, or even taken some of the sky color and just worked over it just lightly, just to kind of gray them down and soften them. You know, again, all of that area on that hillside would have set back because you get rid of those two and see it does, it moves backward. Yeah. But then as soon as they're there, it's just that little bit of intensity right. that pulls all of that forward, you know, and it doesn't take much, it's just that little bit. Um, I mean, this is a beautifully done, you know, beautifully done painting. Everything else works really nice and solidly in it. It's just those little, those two little pine trees. 
you know, that kind of killed it. Um, and I know, you know, that's picky, but, you know, but it is what it is. So. And, you know, she's, she's at a pro level. She should know better. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, anyhow. Um, it know. almost looks like a picture out of focus. Uh-huh. Yeah, nice, nice atmosphere. And the thing is, you know, it's so kind of loose and so abstract. And it's just got a really nice kind of moody feeling to it. And here's a... Uh, This is Jim McVicker, of which we've watched, watched a couple of his videos. Uh, really good painting, you know. And, I mean, this is a big painting. Uh, so this was done, you know, in a studio. But evidently, he likes to paint other artists' paintings, like me. And, uh, you know, nice, nice painting. You know, very loose, very, very painterly style to it. Real nice sense of atmosphere on this one as well. And distance. Again, don't ask me, you know, but hey. <laughs> that is strange. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Well, that's your nightmare for the day. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. Now, now this person, uh, what is it, Brian Stinson? He submitted a couple pieces, and they're very kind of graphic, um, and they're all about, you know, they're kind of like botanicals, but, you know, they're really not flowers or anything like that, but it's like the more I look at these, it's like the more I like them, you know, they're, they're really kind of graphic, really kind of nice pieces. They're big um, and very kind of subtle, but... What's the artist's name again? Uh, Brian Stinson. Okay. And he's from New Mexico, I guess. Yeah. It's almost reminding me of Rebecca's uh, plant picture. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that we'll be able to get to a second one. I don't know where it is. These are all out of order. But then. Twelve by twelve, really nicely handled though. You know, very, very intentional, very clean shapes and things. You know, but just soft enough. You know, in the right places to make it feel kind of wet and atmospheric. Nicely with plain air piece. So as you can see, you know, there's a lot of different styles, a lot of different approaches. Um, you know, people submit a lot of different stuff. Now, this is another pastel, you know, of an interior of an old barn, but, you know, really nicely handled. And then this paintbrush, which just, you know, kills me. And this is a pastel. Good guy. Yeah. And it's uh well it's a 20 by 17 and a half which is kind of medium size you know it's not real big um but you know person's working really really tightly with that pastel i mean it's almost photographic yeah looking at I like this little thing, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's just the color and kind of the edges, you know, it's very kind of graphic, you know, but it's got a kind of a nice feel, nice style to it.
This is uh, is this no? Okay, yeah, I thought this was Jill McGannon. Um, and I've got one of her pieces in here, but this is real reminiscent of her work. Um, this person, Leonard, um, it's got a couple of pieces. Again, you know, really nicely done. You know, bigger pieces, studio pieces, not not plein air. I really like this piece. This is actually a very small painting. It's eleven by fourteen, but you know, very very tight. You know, tightly painted. You know, for the scale that it is. But you know, again, you know, they figured it all out. It's got nice depth to it. Um, you know sharper edges and things, you know, clearer, you know, as you're in the foreground, definitely middle ground, a little bit softer. And then that background, you know, those mountains and sky that really move back for you. So really nicely handled. Uh, again, you know, really nice, kind of strong, very painterly, you know, landscape. I just like the feel of this. Now, th this particular piece, um, it almost reminds me of uh, an artist by the name of Voltan, who was a French, like, post-impressionist painter. Kind of feels like, you know, some of his paintings. Very loose painter, very suggestive in our landscape. That palette knife? Uh... Um, probably not, you know? I mean, there may be some in there. Um, certainly a very kind of rough textured canvas, you know? But again, you know, this is probably something that she did, you know, probably in like, you know, 20 to maybe 30 minutes. But a really nice study and a concept. Now, overall, I mean, You know, they, they handled most things, you know, pretty well in this. But again, they kind of flattened it out. You know, they really got caught up in, in painting these these hills and things in the middle ground. Which is, is, the, is the, that back mountain that flattens it? Pardon? Is it that back mountain that flattens it? Well, I think it's right here. It's this middle ground. Okay. You know, most, most of this comes way forward of that mountain. Yeah. But this is so sharp and focused. And then when they got to the foreground, you know, they got kind of loose and painterly again. So your eye goes like right here. But again, it doesn't really, it doesn't really give you the depth. You know, it doesn't, you know, the foreground doesn't really pull forward. And it's like, I would, I'd like to see them soften, you know, a little bit of this and really kind of pull some of this forward since it's much closer to us. That's just me though. So. A little nocturne. And uh, this is Jill Stefani Wagner again. And again, you know, really kind of moody, atmospheric, you know, nice sense of light. And oh, okay, I didn't get the size of stuff on. My guess is that this is not very big. It may, may be like eight by ten, eleven by fourteen at the most. You know. And then they're back. We've seen this before. <laughs> Okay. Um, nicely done. Mm -hmm. Didn't get the person's name. Yeah. Now this is the same guy that, you know, his work, like I said, keeps reminding me of Jill McGannon's work. And Jill is local, but uh, 
you know, this this kind of feels almost like out of the arts and crafts period. You know, it's very kind of simplified, very kind of design more than realism. And this is that uh, same guy that was doing the botanical stuff. Yeah, Brian Stenson. And again, you know, I keep looking, very kind of graphic feel, you know, very kind of like real sharp edges, you know, very clean color. It feels almost like a print more than a painting. But, uh, you know, there's something I really like about his work. Interesting stuff. This is really painterly and really kind of fun. Another watercolor. Now, you know, in looking at this, I was, you know, my guess is that they probably use some kind of frisket or, you know, something to block out the shapes of all these little leaves and stuff in here. And then once they painted in the background and everything, they you know, they rub that off and then, uh, you know, put color in the, in this area where those leaves are, you know. And then, you know, nice little piece. And it's not, it's tiny. It's a six inch by four inch. So. Yeah, oh, I like that piece. Uh, again, it's uh, about a 16 by 20. And it's uh, Terry, what is it, uh, Widener? I've seen some of his work before, but yeah, really, you know, I like the way he handled this piece. You know, it's interesting subject and uh, just use of color. You know, still has a nice, even though it's not like a, a, you don't have like a lot of depth, you know, in the painting because you don't see the horizon line. You know, he still handled, you know, pushing and pulling the space on the canvas, you know, really pretty nicely. See, John, pine trees. <laughs> you see how they kind of get gray and, you know, stuff in the background. That's nice. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You know, nice composition, nice, you know, lovely idea on this. It's not that big. It's 11 by 14. It's in a while. Again, this is uh, Camille Prisowatic's piece. That's scale. Anyway, um, I guess that's kind of about it for today. I mean, we can keep going, but you know, we're at four o'clock. So anybody got anything to, to say about any of this stuff? Anything you saw? Like it, you know? Yeah, it was interesting. Yeah. Anybody ready to go throw, you know, throw their work, you know, into the ring? <laughs> sure oh, why not a couple of those i think <laughs> well no i mean i'm serious i mean no know. really yeah yeah well, no, do those pieces it, have it, to all be framed to be put in no no it's all digital submissions you don't have to frame it or anything oh wow well. now the one of these winners go on to that uh open competition where they yes. actually are painting no no no, they'll no, they'll they'll never. This is totally online. They'll they'll never oh. actually all hang in the same place at the same time. Well, how did they how did they get to that that uh, contest? Well, and and here's how it works. You know, basically, you submit stuff. You've got twelve months, right? They take all the winners out of the like fifteen or twenty categories uh, for each month. And they're all put into the final competition at the end of the year. And then they they look at the overall and then they judge it based on, you know, on that. You can still win in that category. So like like I won in the uh 
it was uh, August, right? I won the uh, in that acrylic in the acrylic plain air category, and so it'll go. You know, though it'll be submitted. You know, for the end of the year competition. And it'll be judged against everything else, but it will also be judged against all the other acrylic plain air pieces. Oh, wow. Okay. You know, and so it may win again in the acrylic plain air, you know, for the year. And if, if it does, then that means it will probably end up on one of the plain air magazine covers or something like that, or they may end up doing an article, you know, on me or something like that, which is good. Hey. I can use all the help I can get, right? Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> right. Um, you know, but the overall winner, you know, gets like, uh, I think it's like $33,000. Oh. You know, I, you know, I don't well, know, if, I don't know about you, but I could use a little money. Yeah, nothing to sneeze at, as they say. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. that'll buy next month's groceries. For yeah. The <laughs> and I, and I, I think, I think there is some money for each of the winners in all the different categories as well. You know, the overall winners at the end of the year. But usually what ends up happening, you know, and I've, I've kind of followed this for the last like three, four years is that uh you know the people who win throughout the year if if they win the overall category a lot of them end up at these like plein air conferences and stuff like that you know actually demoing or you know um you know kind of showing people what they do um which again is not a bad thing you know uh, a lot of collectors and folks like that really look at these shows and you know if you if you end up at some of those shows, you know, doing demonstrations and stuff like that. Do you have to pay for each entry that you put in? Do what now? Do you pay a sum of money for each entry you put in? Yes, you do. Yes. And and it can get kind of steep. Um, the first entry is $35, and then it's $16 for every other entry. So, you know, so yes. You know, they they make a little money off of this. You know, I mean, just do the math. You know, you've got uh, like 3,500 submissions in the month of, uh, I think that was October, right? So, you know, at $16 a pop, they're making a little money, <laughs> you know? Uh, yep, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then and they're not all sixteen, you know. I no. mean, one of those. I mean, you know, if if everybody put in like say five pieces, the first piece is thirty five, right? So so you know, I mean, it's nothing to sneeze at. I mean, they can afford to give away the thirty three thousand dollars at the end of the year. Yes, they yes. easily made that, you know, on people submitting work. Oh, <laughs> you know. many times over. <laughs> yeah. But again, you know, and, you know, for me, you know, I realize, you know, I'm going to spend a fair amount of money doing this over the next, say, year to two years. But at the same time, you know, it's like advertising, you know, yeah. in fact, it, in fact, that's just the way I look at it. It is my advertising budget. Um, yes. you know, because I'm actively trying to promote my work and anything that gets noticed, any kind of award or anything I get from that, that just adds to the provenance of my work so that when I approach galleries and collectors and people like that, it's like they've seen my work, they've heard of me, you know, or think they've heard of me. And, um, and it just generally, you know, helps me become more collectible, you know, as an artist. And, uh, you know, I've kind of waited, you know, I've kind of been on a, like a, a 15 year sabbatical, you know, working for the county. And I hadn't really pushed stuff like this, but, you know, since I'm getting ready to retire here in two years, I figure I need to start getting my name out there. Um, you know, because I, I kind of need to hit the ground running, 
you know, when I'm done with this so that I can kind of move over into the next step, you know, of my quote unquote career as an artist, you know, and, um, you know, I know I'm, I keep talking about retiring, you know, what is that? You know, I mean, <laughs> I'm going to retire and I'm going to be painting as fast as I can for the rest of my life. So, you know, but that's fine. You know, I mean, it's what I love to do. I'm passionate about it. And, you know, it's like, why not? So. Yes, you definitely don't want to just retire and stop painting. <laughs> no, that is not the idea. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's like when I do retire, it's like it frees me up. I can travel. I can move at my own pace. If I want to go to the Philippines and spend, you know, five or six months traveling around there or Thailand or China or somewhere like that, you know, I can do that and, and do a lot of paintings and work and come back. And if I've made gallery connections um, and have a couple of galleries to put work in or have collectors um, that are collecting my work at that point. Yeah, and it just it just gives you the freedom to do things like that. Right. Yeah. And that's what we're looking for. <laughs> you know, <laughs> is a little bit of freedom to travel around and you know have fun. Yeah. And do do some yeah. so and you know, I mean there's no reason that any one of you can't sort of do the same thing. So you know it you know, it takes effort, it takes work, you know, it's not just going to magically happen, you know, for most people, so, but you, you, you know, you can look around, make a plan, and, and you know, get your work out there, so, which will be good for you, you know, because it's, it's, it's nice that you can, you know, do art and just kind of do it because you enjoy it, but, you know, if you have an outlet for it and you have an audience, um, that gives you more motivation to produce more art. Yeah. So, you know. And besides, you know, who's going to keep you guys going after I retire, right? So, keep your hand in it, right? I guess I'm going to have to make weekly phone calls to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, Susan? Are you still drawing? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm still drawing. <laughs> you know, have to keep checking in on everybody. So, at any rate, thank you all for coming. Um, tomorrow morning, uh, we're gonna be we're gonna be talking about a couple of painters tomorrow. So, uh, you know, a couple of painters that I actually know. So. I'm going to show you some of their work and we'll we'll talk about the you know why people do what they do okay so have a good rest of the day okay you too thank you yes yeah, stay warm okay oh yeah <laughs> All bye, right. bye 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 thank you <laughs>